Hi guys and welcome to this video relating to arithmetic sequences using a recursion. My name is Darren from Mathsguru, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you are not doing this through duress and you've actually stumbled across this because you want to smash mathematics. And that's my total aim. But before I do that, will you do me a favour and subscribe to my YouTube channel? I know, very needy, I say at the start of every lesson, by you clicking that subscribe button it just tells me that someone out there is watching and that I'm actually not just sitting in a room here talking to myself going very slowly mad. I'm also on TikTok, below. Believe it or not, yes, I know, I'm way too old for that, aren't I? Now, I start the lessons with learning objectives, and by the end of the lesson, I hope you are to generate an arithmetic sequence. What on earth is an arithmetic sequence? Using a recurrence relation. Now, if that's new to you, hey, don't worry about it. Stop the video, head over to mathsguru.com, sign up for absolute free because you can watch my previous videos on there, all right? And you can even download the notes, put them in your summary book, do what you need to do. But if you do know what they are, let's continue. What else are we going to do? To eep, <laughs> I need to do that again, I'll correct that, to be able to use the rule for the nth term to solve problems using arithmetic sequence. All right, so let's recap. What on earth is an arithmetic sequence? It is a sequence that basically either goes up by a fixed amount or down by a fixed amount. So for example, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, that is an example of an arithmetic sequence. The reason being is I'm going up by three every single time. So there, my recurrence rule would be plus three. Another example, uh, let's do 100 and 50 and zero and minus 50 and minus 100. Again, what do I notice? They are going down by exactly the same amount. So there would be minus 50. So an arithmetic sequence, you have to add on or take away the same amount from term to term. Not multiply, not divide. It has to be add and taken on, all right? What on earth was a recurrence relation? Well, if you remember, we could write this here in terms of some mathematical notation by saying, for example, let t0 equals 3. Now, t0 is my first term. I have to do that comma, and t of n plus 1 is equal to the t of n. Now, what would that be? Plus... 3. All right, so again, my first term here is 3. My next term is got by taking my current term and adding 3 to it. So that was a recap of the previous video. So if you haven't watched them, you don't need to know because I think that's pretty much it. Now, a general form for the recurrence relationship basically just says we don't want to hard code numbers in. And by that, I mean here we're basically saying that we're starting with a sequence uh, starting at 2 and we're going to add 2 to get from term to term to term. Well, that's if I did that for every single sequence, it'd always be the same, wouldn't it? But not all my sequences will start at 2. And not all of my sequences will add 2 to it. So I want a, a more generic way of being able to do it. And what we can do is replace the 2 and the plus 2. And how do we do that? Well, we can replace it with letters. We use algebra. We know that letters can stand for numbers, yes? So in this situation, I can say, well, let that first number be the letter A, and let this here, that rule, be plus D. It can be plus or minus D. We'll come back to that one a little bit later on. But we actually call this here the common difference. As I've said here, and I'll highlight it on my notes, that there is a common difference. It means that basically the difference is the same. It's a common difference. I can't explain it in any other way. So if we now know that we have a general form of my equation, I can use it, for example. All right. So generate and graph the first five terms of the arithmetic sequence defined by recurrence relationship. Now I'll come back to the graph bit in a moment, okay? But obviously the first thing I want to do is try and get my actual numbers. So I've got to get the first five terms. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five lines. Again, you don't have to do this. It's just I've seen so many people in exams stuff it up because ultimately they just um, put too many numbers, really, or not enough numbers. So we know my first term is given here. That's a nice, easy part there. So that is 24. What is my rule? To get to my next term, I take my current term and subtract two. So I'm just going to take two away. So that's going to be 22, 20, 18, and 16. Those are my numbers. Now I've got to graph them, and here is a word of warning. If you don't use a pencil and ruler in an exam, particularly for VCAR, you're not going to get the marks. All right, really sorry about that. They are sticklers for this. They're trying to knock marks off you or trying to make you earn the marks. And just being sloppy, you're not going to get the marks. Now I can't draw perfectly straight lines. Oh yeah, I can. I'm on a new piece of software. Very exciting. So there's my nice straight lines. 
I would now label it with my T and I would say T of N and I'll explain that in just a moment, okay? So T is my term number and we know what the term numbers are, that's 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So in that situation, my numbers would go 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now notice that my scale is perfectly even across the way. If, I, if it's not, you're going to lose marks. Again, I'm really sorry. What's my highest number I've got to go to? 24. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 24. Now, <laughs> this number here halfway down would be 12. And then I've got how many gaps? 2, 4, 6, 6 gaps. Ooh, am I going to be able to do this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 gaps. One two, three, four, five. And again, they have to be accurate. I've got an example on the next page. Now, when you're plotting these, again, you cannot just take the pen and randomly plot it somewhere. You can't put it in a general location. It has to be exact. So for T0, that's this very first T0, my point would have to be plotted at 0, 24. So there we go. I would do a nice dot spot on that 24. One, I'm going to have it 22. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, so 22 is going to be there and then the next one two across is going to be what was it going to be 20 and then 18 and then whatever now again that's nowhere near straight but it just so happens I have an example here right now you'll notice that in my graph if I go back my my points would be relatively high on the screen wouldn't it yes but what you'll notice here is the, uh, the textbook has actually used that little heartbeat sign. And what that means is we have missed all the numbers from 0 to 14 out. We've actually just compressed the graph just so that we can make it easier to see. All right, I can't, if I was just to draw that as a straight line between 0 and 14, it would be wrong. You have to do a little heartbeat sign. And we also have to be very careful when we do that uh, if we're trying to get other points on the graph. But I digress, he says. So there is my recurrence relation and there is my graph. And what you notice again is those points are smack bang where they're supposed to be. And if I was going to, I could draw a perfect straight line through that. And that's important. Arithmetic sequences will always, 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 always give you straight lines. They will either slope up or they will slope down. The next bit, and again, I'm hoping that you guys will be able to now graph any one of these things given the information that I've got, okay? So that should be there. The next bit is we now want to try and find the nth term. Now there is another way of calling the nth term in math, and that is to find the rule. And I said a little bit earlier on, we're going to be very careful with the words rule and recurrence relation, right? This here is a recurrence relation. It has a T0 in it and it has a T of n plus 1. A rule will start with Tn equals and that's it. It will just have Tm. Because what we're going to now do is rather than go term to term to term, like we've been doing earlier, rather than going term to term to term, I'm going to turn around and say, well, what would the 50th number be without me having to do that 49 times? Is there a way of being able to work it out? Well, actually there is. And here is the theory. I'm going to start here with my recurrence relation. See if I can come up with a rule. My first term is 2. It says to get to my next term, add 2. So my next term is going to be 2 plus 2. How do I get to my next term? Well, you are going to turn around and say, well, it's 4 plus 2. Yeah, it is, but I'm always now going to want that first number in there. So if I've got my first number, if I'm starting with 2, to get to my next number, I'd be 2 plus 2 because I'd have to add 2 on twice, wouldn't I? My first number's 2, my next number's 4, my next number's 6. But what we notice is to get to there, I'm adding on 2. To get to there, I'm adding on 4. And if I go to my next number, which is going to be 8, I'll be adding on 6. And so again, if I go to here, that my next number would be 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. And the next number would be 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. And I could keep going like this uh, to infinity and beyond, but that's not my point. What I'm now going to say is all of these seem to have the same thing. They have my start number. So all of these sequences start with T0. Now, if I go back, I'm just going to write that here. This one here is T0. This here is T1. This here is T2, T3, and T4. Now, what I want you to start doing is looking at the number of twos I've got that I'm adding on and this bottom number here. 
a bottom number here and the number of twos I'm adding on. The bottom number here and the number of twos I'm adding on. Hold on a minute, they seem to be the same. Stop the world, I want to get off. So in which case, that there is two plus one times two. This one here is two plus two times two. This is two plus three times two. Two plus four times two. Oh, so again, the two is my first number. So that's that number there. This one, two, three, four seems to be coming from this bottom number here. But where does this two come from here? Why am I adding on four lots of two, two lots of two, three lots of two? Because it tells me here. So this value here basically is that there. And that's because that's a plus, this is a plus. If this here was a minus, that would be a minus. So how can I write this in a general form? Well, we normally now say t with the little n below. The reason being is n stands for number, the number of the term. So that would become equal to 2 plus, hmm, well, n times 2, wouldn't it? So in that situation, my formula would be t0, sorry, my formula there, he says trying to draw about, would be t of n is equal to t0 plus 2 times n. Whoa! Nope. Yes, actually, that's exactly what it would be. Sorry, I had a bit of a brain freeze there. I wasn't really sure. So if I wanted to get to one, two, 0, 1, 2, 3, so if I want to get to my next term, the 1 here, what would it T0? Would it be T0, T1, T2, T3? That would be T4. All right, let's just check my formula works. So T4 would be equal to T0, which is 2, plus 2 times 4. Well, 2 times 4 is 8. 2 plus 8 gives me 10. And whoa and behold, I have it. Yay! Now, that works for just that one example. Is there a better way of doing this? Well, the more I practice it, yes, there is absolutely a way of doing it. But if we go back to my general form here, where we say that my first number is now given by the letter A, and my common difference is given by D, then what we are going to say is, going back to my past idea, we started at that. My T of M is going to be T0 plus N times what my current common difference was. Now again, in this situation, they don't use t0, they actually use a, so t of n is equal to a plus nd. Now we can write those two together because that time sign is basically kiss, they're kissing, don't go there, and it drags them all together, yes? So that there is my rule to allow me to get to any number in my list, any number whatsoever. Now again, this is where my rule is a plus rule, what you notice is here that where my rule is a minus rule, we have exactly the same letters. T of n equals a minus nd, all right? But that minus sign becomes important. So we can also have T of m equals a minus n times d. Here's an example, finding the nth term. Right, so we've got a recurrence relationship here. And let's see what it's got. T0 equals 21. And to get to my next term, I subtract 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that minus 3. I want my brain to focus on the fact that it's actually a minus rule. And I know that t of n is equal to a minus n times d. Right? So that's come from this previous page here. Right? All I've done is that's a minus because it's a minus rule. Got it from my summary book. So now let's put in some values. t of n is what we want. So we want t of n is equal to, what's the value of a? Well, a is my first term. Have they given me the first term? Yeah, it's 21. Minus n times, what's my current difference? Or my common difference? Well, the formula says take away 3. I've already got the minus sign in here, so I just want to put the 3 there. So there is my rule. But they want me to find t of 20. Well, what do I notice? That n there has become 20, so whenever an n becomes uh, a number, it becomes that same number all the way through the formula. So it becomes 21 minus 20 times 3, which is 21 minus 60. Now, again, I don't know how to do this in my head, and I'm not going to bother. 
So I'm going to fire up my calculator. Let's close that down. Do a new calculator screen. 21 minus 60, please, Mr. Calculator, gives me minus 39. Whoops. Minus 39. Ka-ching. And there we go. Another example, for, consider this recurrence relationship, t0 equals 54, t of n plus 1 equals t of n plus 4, find t50, ah, easy. Now this is a plus rule, it's adding on. So we now know that t of n is equal to t0 plus n times d, because it's a plus rule. So my nth term, my number, is t0, what's t0? 54, we could write that as a plus the n stays there. What's my common difference? It's going up by 4. So there we go. That becomes 4. Now, what does the question want? We want t of 50. And we notice that the n has changed into a 50 here. So that n must also be a 50. So it gives me 54 plus 50 times 4. 54, 50 times 4 is 200. And I can do that in my head. It gives me 254. ka -ching. There we go. And believe it or not, that's the end of this lesson too. Whoa, we have used recurrence relations and we've found a rule for our arithmetic sequences. I wonder what can be coming up. Geometric sequences maybe? Yeah. Now, geometric sequences is basically where we multiply things. <laughs> we'll leave that one there. My name's Darren. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you have found it useful. If you can, subscribe to YouTube. Follow me on TikTok and all that type of stuff. And hopefully I'll see you in another video. Don't forget mathsguru.com where you can download this uh, notes from this lesson and watch the video again if you need to and spread the word. If you let your mates know that it's here, I'd be deeply, deeply grateful. Otherwise, you take care and stay safe.